Okay, so today we're going to be taking a quick look at Pridwin and an article that re they released on how to prepare for Jingyuan, uh, the next banner, the next limited banner. I guess it's not a limited banner. I'm thinking of like Arknights. The next character banner coming for Star Rail on the 17th. So today we're recording this. This is the 14th. Uh, we got a couple days left in the Sila banner, and it's going to switch to Jingyuan and his five-star weapon. Um, the reason I'm going to talk about this, uh, the article's pretty, um, it's pretty concise. It's got a lot of good information, and I really, really like Jing. I got him in the second closed beta test, and he's a super cool character, um, really powerful. I'm looking to build him. Hopefully I can pull him. So that's why I want to take a look at this article. I've not looked at the article beyond just sort of um, glancing through it. Uh, but I did want to talk about Pridwin a little bit. Um, this is a website I use for a bunch of different gacha games. It's uh, pretty much just like a, a all-in-one wiki. Um, they have like, uh, like tier lists, DPS rankings, uh, character builders for Star Rail, uh, if you're looking at like counter side, they have, um, you know, characters and, uh, and ships for like global versus, you know, Korean servers. They've got a bunch of different games, games that are like up, up and coming, like Limbus Company. Uh, it's a really good resource for Nikkei if you play that. Um, they're just a sort of like all, all in one gotcha wiki. Super, super cool that they've been, um, going actually ham on Star Rail ever since like the last closed beta. And it's a really helpful resource. Uh, gives a lot of good information, especially if you're new to the game. Um, but also like ways on how to build um, characters. Like if you wanna build Bailu, you can come here for some cursory information um, or at least a, a, place, a place to start. Like what weapon might be good, what stats you're looking for, what teams she's good in, that kind of thing, so. They, uh, they do have a blog where they post, um, you know, up and coming articles and, and, you know, things that they're writing. They also post that stuff on their Discord. Uh, I'm actually, I'm viewing this in Opera, um, so we don't see any of the ads. But uh, from what I understand, they have a Patreon. I, I took a look at the Patreon, and the highest tier of Patreon, I think it was like 15 bucks a month, said that in the future you'd be able to view the websites ad-free. Um, I'd say the one downfall to this website is like most wikis, there's a ton of advertisements um, and at some points can be very, very distracting and very, um, I don't know, difficult to use at times, difficult to read, especially with like autoplay videos. So like that's why I'm viewing it in Opera. Um, if they do implement the way to view the uh, website without ads, you know, I'll gladly support them, but uh, as of right now, they don't. <laughs> okay, so we've got a couple days before Jing comes out. Um, I, I don't know if they go into it here, uh, but he is a... He has a lightning nihility character. I believe he's nihility. Let's go... Let's actually be uh, smart about this. Erudition. Erudition is the AOE path, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super cool. I'm not going to go in depth on, on his abilities or anything like that. Maybe once we get him as a character, I can try that. But uh, this is strictly for what you need. So right now, I think... I don't know if I've seen any level 70 characters. But uh, it's very common in Genshin. And uh, sometimes like Arknights and I don't know, maybe a couple other gotchas. Like if you if you know a character is coming out early and we know what it takes to build them, people will start um, collecting materials so that you can, as soon as you get the character, you can like max them out or at least get them like pretty, pretty far advanced. So that's what I'm trying to do with Jing. So in order to get him to level 60, you need this amount of credits, 200,000, fuck. It's late, it's late at night. 
238,900 credits, which is honestly like, Honka Star Rail is pretty generous with credits, as well as it doesn't really cost that much to max a character. I think 60 is sort of like the soft max right now. Um, if you want to level a character from level 60 to 70, it's like almost the same cost from 1 to 60. So 1 to 60 and then 71, sorry, 61 to 70 are like the same cost. So you can, you know, argue whether or not you should level a character to 70. I know a lot of people in Genshin and other gotchas, you know, they don't really see the point in maxing out characters because the percentage on damage is like so negligible and it costs so much, so many materials. Like you could build a whole other character with the same materials uh, to get to level 70. But if you want to do level one to 70, it's 451,000 credits. Um, for 1 to 60, you do need Traveler's Guides uh, for XP. 86 of them seems like a pretty high uh, amount of XP. Um, but if you do like daily logins and things like that on the Hoyo app, uh, which I have yet to do today. Thank you, me, for reminding me. Um, as well as like daily quests and things like that, you should be able to get regular XP, especially if you do. I guess they've got the um, like daily missions. Uh, you can focus on character XP. Those only take 20 hours at max. So it's this is 86 of the most efficient, or sort of most XP dense material, uh, as well as Ascension materials, um, shape shifters, lightning staff. I should have looked this up beforehand, but I have no idea where that comes from. Likely one of the uh, golden calyx that you can farm. Um, so I'm gonna be looking for that. I, I doubt I have any of these, but uh, shouldn't shouldn't be too bad to farm, especially if you've been saving um, stamina for the past uh, couple weeks. Like I've been saving up. I knew Jing was you know gonna come after Sila, because that's how it went in the um, the closed beta test. I you know I, I really like Sila, but she's a bit too OP. I feel like she would just make the game way too way too easy. So I've been saving all my rolls and everything for Jing. So th these next couple days, I'm gonna go kind of ham on gathering materials. As for skills, he uses a, a slightly different um, like skill materials or upgrade materials than some of the characters you might have. Um, so farming these important, I guess. At level 60, you can Level your skills up to level six. Uh, I think before 60 is when you have a cap of four. Um, hey, Phoenix. Um, so if you decide to skip a skill, you will need to prepare fewer mats, but honestly, the only skill you could consider skipping is the basic one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, obviously, if you want the max amount of damage, most efficiency, most powerful, you need to max all of their, uh, uh, their traces. Uh, their skills. Um, another 200k credits seems seems good. Uh, these like green and blue materials for traces are very very easy to farm. Um, you can honestly set up a auto farm even if you don't have a particularly high level team. You can get a support character if you go to a Calyx, and you know if you go to the Calyx that gives you any of these. Uh, trace materials, you can find a support character that's max level, like uh, a friend or like a random person that has like a level 60 character, especially Sila, because she's the most powerful. Um, you can start an auto that takes, you know, maybe five minutes and you can blow through all of your stamina and get a bunch of these materials. And if you do that for like, you know, a day or two, you might have enough. Or, you know, if you use um, the equivalent of resin to, to get more stamina. Um, if you've reached level 70, character cap, plan to upgrade the skills to level 8. Here's what you need to prepare. Oh my gosh. Almost 500k credits. <laughs> this feels like uh, in Genshin. So I've not gotten a character nearly this, this far. This feels like when you crown a character in Genshin. 
Like, yeah, you're up, upping their damage and whatnot, but at what cost? Like, holy God. This is, this is what's going to take weeks to farm. Maybe not weeks, but not three days, you know, when the, when the banner drops. So we've got a little bit of time left on that. Um... Oh, these were for skills. Yeah, these, duh. These were for skills. These were for traces. These, um, one track of destiny. That's actually pre pretty easy to get. Uh, I believe the, um, the Herda shop has one. There's, I think, a shop in the underground of Bellabog that has one. I think there's one in the weekly... Um, simulated universe that you can always get if you get enough points. That that seems very easy to do. You could you could blow through that in a day. Um, to upgrade all major and minor traces only costs seventy five thousand credits. That's actually very very cheap. You know, a daily login might get you ten or fifteen thousand credits. If you've skipped any of the surveys, do a survey. They give you like thirty thousand credits. That seems super easy. As well as more of the same materials that we've been farming. So that seems very, very easy. Destroyer's Final Road. Um, again, I, <laughs> I should have looked these up. But this is very sort of off the cuff. Uh, this is likely comes from another Calyx. Um, yeah, seems easy enough to get. Here are additional materials you need to unlock the two minor traces that become available after level 60. More farming. This is going to take a little bit longer. Getting purple mats. More than a couple days farm. Total of mats level 1 to 60. The table below shows all the materials you need to prepare for Jing. Unlock his traces and upgrade his skills. Okay. Okay. From level 1 to 60. So Okay, so all skills, all traces, level 60. You need a total of 638,900 credits. I think I have saved up right now 1.2 million. So that, that like, you know, that's a very achievable amount. And I've been, you know, I've been playing and leveling up characters this whole time. Credits, I feel like, in this game are very, very generous. Seems good. And then, of course, the, the travel guy, Traveler guide we've talked about you can use the blue or green ones like I think I have a couple hundred green ones like it, it'll be easy enough I think the the biggest thing we'll be getting the track of destiny from any of the shops that requires like maybe doing daily quests or whatever um, but that's for like max level and some of the purple mats um, for traces and whatnot that might be the the longest uh, grind that might not be like ready when when the banner drops full level 1 to 60 you need 1.2 million 71,000 holy god that's what i'm saying like level 1 to 60 is the same as level 60 to 70 that's insane yeah yeah and you need about another 80 xp guides I've yet to encounter a character that's level 70 on anybody's support. So I don't know what the math breakdown. Maybe once Jin comes out, we can take a look at um, the character builder and see like the actual numbers, the difference between a level 60 Jing and a level 70 Jing. Because once uh, once he's fully released, we'll have like accurate numbers. I think these are still closed beta numbers, which might be you know different. But yeah, you know, it could be the difference of like two percent, or it could be like ten percent difference, right? So, like in Genshin, I max out my characters to level eighty. I don't I don't bring them up to level ninety because the investment is so high for such a little. Bonus. I'd rather spend all of that on like a new character, right? Um, so it could be the same in Star Rail, or it could be it could be different. You know, we can check that out when the banner's out. Um, I really like that this is all in one place, though. So like, while I'm grinding, 
I can say, okay, well, I need X amount of keys to get to level 160. Um, let's see, what do, what do you need the keys for? Keys are for skills and traces. So I'll, I'll definitely have enough to take care of the skills and traces. Okay, once I have that, that many, stop farming. Um, I like that this is all, all in one place, very cleanly formatted. I think a lot of wikis sometimes are uh, a little confusing. Um, maybe I'm just, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I just don't do well with wikis, but uh, pretty one has been pretty well, pretty good at, you know, maintaining information, uh, keeping it up to date, and making it uh, easy to access. Um, so I'll leave uh, I'll leave a link to this in the description of the video, and uh, a link to their main website. Uh, again, I, I think I'm going to make a separate video going over the di like the sort of ups and downs of this website, but I use this website like literally every day. Like I don't play Counterside as much anymore, but when I did, I was like on here every day. I play Artery Gear, I play Nikkei, I play Star Rail. Like it's like a super good resource that I wish a lot of other gotchas um, were able to have. Like there's for Arc Knights, there's a ship, but I think I get a little bit confused on a ship. And there's there's another one I can't remember. Might just be like a blog spot or game spot or whatever wiki for it. But some of them are a little confusing. But I, I, I wish they'd pick up Arc Knights. Um, but that seems like a pretty big undertaking when they've been focused on uh, Star Rail so heavily since since right before the launch. Um, it's really Star Rail and Nikkei where they where they put their um, all of their at attention. But there are some upcoming gotchas that they're, they're uh, introducing, which is really cool. Wikis are for old people. Just check the pins on the Discord. That's fair. That's fair. They do have a Discord. Um, that's actually it's super active. All of the games are super active. There's a there's a very healthy like artery gear, uh, PvP and guild uh, section. Um, I know artery gear is like a little bit less popular than some of these other ones. Um, the Honkai is just insane. Super active. And like I said, this is a super good resource. I come here to like look at builds. Like I was just the other day, I was looking at um, Yanqing. So I got him and I was like, okay, well, what relics might I need for him? And, and I was like, okay, if they say Hunter of Glacial Forest is the best, um, I'm going to figure out, you know, where I can farm and spend, you know, X amount of time farming for specific relics. And uh, they, they also give like rankings of... Uh, Light cones, which is pretty cool. The team builder, I don't really care about. Like, it's cool that they have like, hey, here's a suggested team, but I'm gonna play the people I like. 